Hey everybody, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin in Tucson, Arizona, where we have a brick and mortar store. We got a YouTube channel, we got a coin show, we got all kinds of stuff going on. But today, what we've got is a big old box of regret. It's crack out time, folks. And we're going to go ahead and start with some of our friends' crack out. So, this $1,800 uh, PCGS cleaned VF details. So, our customer actually sent this in specifically because he wanted to make sure that he got the uh, Bolander type on there. So that's the identifying markers to show you which variety it is for the dollar. So this one's a little bit tricky because I don't have, I feel I feel like the lighting's not showing this properly uh, to really capture what's going on here on this coin. Uh, these can be very tricky as far as coins that have uh, been cleaned in the past at some point in time and then have been retoned versus being toned like so this to me has uh that really really dark look and at this angle what you're seeing is like uh there's almost the entire darkness to the surface of the coin followed by residue which is in the devices right so you that is that is kind of the what i'm seeing that's the indicator that this coin was probably chemically retoned over the cleaning so uh, VF details cleaned with the Bolander number on there. And that's exactly what he expected. We both expected it would come back. So no surprise on there, no shame in the game. Uh, that was as expected. Next up, he had this 1892 uh, questionable color on details barber quarter. And this coin here, I think, is what we would call wishful thinking. I've actually had a lot of NGC... Um, NGC Indian sense that I must have this color come through and I'm, I'm very intrigued by all of those. Uh, this coin of course uh, is not a very natural anything to it and so artificial toning on details. This was wishful thinking and uh, but you can't blame a guy for trying. It's a beautiful coin. Some of your indicators on here are going to be a combination of, I think, kind of the, some of these, see the spot down here on the edge and these spots over there. Some of the, some of the little spottiness areas can be from the chemical process. But um, I, I wish the coin were, looked just a little bit different and got a straight grade because it's pretty, pretty stunning. All right, next up we've got uh, a, a 22S. Unk details questionable color. Also, you know, this one I told him I was pretty sure would still just come back. Questionable color. So 22S is uh, tougher coin. Those are coins that higher grade is where they really jump. You know, a 64 is $200, a 65 is 1000 This coin is very, very pleasing overall. And of course, they did call it artificial toning. Uh, but it has super bright surfaces like you want to see and a neat neat coin okay last but not least um i had this in my showcase and he bought it from me and i said you know i just wrote um you know i like it on the on the coin and i had it priced high for the coin it's uh 1924 is not a rare date but i just really liked the toning and it has just a nice original look to it MS62, uh, not exactly the grade we would like on the coin because I think that it warrants something better than a subpar grade. So, you know, grading 62s to me are coins that are unattractive. Uh, maybe maybe y'all feel that way about that coin, but I really liked it. So I'm going to have some fun now. Going to have some fun now. The next coin, 21S. So... You know, I don't claim to know how to grade coins, but I will say that the coins that I feel like I know how to grade include, for some odd, odd reason, 21S Morgan Dollars, 21 Morgan Dollars in general. Usually, I think I know when they've got the look. And by the look, I mean a coin that's going to come back a nice 64 or better. And this coin has that look. It's just really, really cool. Satiny finish, just big old pools of luster, uninterrupted. Just hype it up, Ben. Hype it up for your artificial toning. So this is fantastic because, you know, lots of times I'll say, well, you know, like, I'd rather see a 63, da-da-da. Can I explain to you that this is just incorrect? 
like I'm just gonna say this is wrong this is not artificial toning in fact these two coins have almost the exact same tone to them and I can't tell you how many albums and boxes and paper things I've opened up this is just basic original toning uh, very similar to this coin and they're just not right and it's not making me too happy and uh, you won't like me when I'm not happy. Well, you probably don't like me now, so we won't worry about that. Next up, I have, similarly, this 21 Denver coin, which I had priced at $38. That, that was supposed to be an 8. I know it looks like a Y. Like, what is that? Good golly. Who works here? 1921 Denver. So once again, right in my wheelhouse for a coin that's going to pop, right? So 21 S's and 63 are 140. And 64, they're 240. That's just gray sheet numbers. The 21 Denver and 63 is 165, and 64, they are 340. And this coin also is just really cool looking. Beautiful little coin, and on details reverse clean. So the exciting thing for me is, of course, anytime they actually tell you which side they believe was cleaned, I find that to be kind of a uh, good thing, because then I'm like, okay, well, I will further inspect what they're looking at. Now, if anything, you can say, well, this coin like lots of coins has some, maybe some PVC issues that actually need to be removed. So the cleaning, so I'm guessing that there are maybe some hairlines somewhere tucked in here that I didn't see, which can happen. Oftentimes, you know, a coin will get dinged because you have not cleaning over the whole surface, but maybe if there was a spot on the coin, then and they tried to remove it, you'll just see some hairlines in one small spot, right? I'm just gonna film this for the next hour until you guys can tell me where that where that cleaning is on this coin. So also, just a little tip, sometimes looking at the coin upside down helps because you stop looking at the design and start looking at the surfaces. One last thing, and I will move on. Uh, these 21D and S's have like the world's smallest mint marks. There it is, the D above the D and the O and the word dollar, and then again the S above the D and the O and the word dollar. I think they just took a mercury dime mint punch and just like punched it on the back of a dollar. It's just so tiny. And it gets smaller every year I go along. So there we go. Uh, on to the next thing. This coin, 1913, two and a half was actually something that came in that originally we had priced as I had priced it as a 63 plus but of course Indian uh, two and a half Indians when they got the jump in price you can't really sell them raw like that because people probably aren't gonna buy them as raw but this is a fun coin you've got the glistening glitter look that you want to see on a two and a half uh, if, for those of you who are new to this the two and a half Indian and the five Indian have in queue surfaces, in queue design elements, I mean, so the surface is the highest point. So you really want to see that glimmer and shimmer right there on top of the field. So above the eagle, and then everything in front and around the Indian and the headdress. Full sparkle, full sparkle and glitter mode, and that makes a two and a half, an uncirculated coin. Really nice. I, I actually had written down as a 63 plus, it came back as 63. Tough coin. You know, over a thousand dollars. A sixty-four is over fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. Pretty neat piece. For those of you who are trying to collect two and a halves, that's that's a, that's a tough that's a tough get right there. Next up, oh look at this! Somebody somebody cracked out a uh, CAC holder. I don't know who did that. So, but uh, here we go. And this was a fifty uh, AU details. AU details clean. And the reason I decided to send this coin in is I actually, you know, it was actually graded well. I mean, one of the things that's tricky about a coin like this is these guys have super flat surfaces uh, as far as the overall strike design goes. In fact, you know, part of the back part of her headdress, the Y in Liberty is almost, well, the Y in Liberty is completely gone. And that's through the striking process on this coin. And then you'll see it's got just no detail over the wings and the claws. And yet it has really great surface luster. And I thought with the number of coins that I've sent to the NGC that there's a pretty good chance 
that they would straight grade this coin, and they did not. So there you go. AU53, uh, that is a coin that, you know, straight graded is probably six or seven hundred dollars. So it'll be less than that, naturally, with the cleaning. Uh, so next up, I have a coin that I don't have the case for. I don't know what's going on here. And uh, this is the type of coin that I will probably just keep forever because this coin, I think, is absolutely stunning as far as coins go. This has an incredible, incredible look for a, uh, a Lewis and Clark, 1904. Fun, fun, fun thing, the coins, commemorative coins issued uh, in tandem with some exposition. So the Lewis and Clark exposition, Portland, Oregon. Cool, cool piece. And this was in another holder, and I think it was graded 63 in an, another holder. And I thought that is, it was like an old PC Jess holder. And for some reason, I don't have that holder. Even though I had all the other holders here, I don't know where that one went. MS-63, and, uh, you know, I just am going to probably hold it. What am I gonna, supposed to do? Sell it as a 63? I mean, the coin is stunning. So I would have to say, since it was a 3 and it's a 3, and, uh, you know, sometimes it's me. I mean, like like I said, I argued I argued that they were wrong on this 21S. I only get to, I only get to throw so many uh, flags, challenge flags uh, per, per game here, guys. So, uh, you know... Perhaps, perhaps some hairlines on the field are drawing you back and calling this a mere mortal 63, even though the fields are stunning, the color is stunning. Uh, maybe I'm just in love with the color. Maybe that's what it is. All right, enough of those shenanigans. We also had a few raw coins that we sent in that were in our showcase. We're not in our showcase yet, as the case may be, this 1873 dime, seated dime. Nice overall coin, you know, the design elements on these guys are very rounded instead of being crisp. So you see that over the legs and the arms and, and all the waviness versus the reverse of the coin uh, where you'll have, well, pardon me, once again, English. Even on, the, even on the reverse of these coins, those design elements oftentimes are not crisp. They can be kind of wavy or flat. So this coin came back in AU53. Interesting, interesting coin. This is the type of coin. Sometimes I talk about how, you know, you have a coin that's a little bit of a judgment call. Like, you know, I've seen these coins straight grade. Similar, I've seen coins like this come back called clean, right? And so I'm not complaining. I, I'm just pointing that out that uh, <laughs> I like I like the coin overall. But you'll see coins like these marked clean. Probably a, probably a three hundred dollar ballpark coin. Next up, we have a 75, similar, similar looking coin, 1875, and for some reason, it's not focusing, but it's the CC and Carson City. This actually comes two ways, coins two ways. You can get the Carson City above the wreath or below. This is the above the wreath. Obviously, the below would be right down at six o'clock. And this coin is interesting because they called it obverse tooled. Now tooling usually is a term that is used to describe someone who is engraving a coin in a way to enhance the fields, uh, the design elements, right? To enhance the design elements is usually a tooled coin. So we're gonna look here and see if they have indeed so usually what happens is and it's actually can be pretty hard to miss because oftentimes they will actually dig in around the outline of the coin to make it pop and you will see some scratches what are like old scratch marks so if you look between the word united and states right there you'll see that bright line popping up and then that line carries down and under the word united there's also some almost like a staple scratch mark so i would have marked that as scratched not as tooled so let me see if we can see if there's any actual tooling lines around the periphery or sometimes they'll actually tool the word liberty again to make it stronger or they will outline the date to make it stronger and i am not seeing that with uh the 
view I've got here. And I'm going to take another look, not through my camera. So I think, I think the thing on that coin is that really, really, I think they're referring to the scratch lines, which, you know, is what it is. They are there. And so you could have called it scratched, but she didn't. 1926 quarter. Any of you guys SLQ fans out there looking for something with some pop to it? And oftentimes on quarters, people are looking to see if it's got the full head. That's something you can cherry pick. If you find older holders, there are coins in older holders where they did not designate strike designations. That goes for all series. Beautiful looking coin. A little disappointed in a 63. I mean, beautiful coin. Uh, I don't think there's too big of a spread on those coins between threes and fours. You know, maybe it's a 40 or $50 spread. I could be wrong on that. But on a common date, it feels like it's not, not that big of a deal. So not that big of a jump. All right, next up, 1874. Uh, half dollar. The arrows at the date. I don't get too many of these guys in, and I don't get them graded very often. But this one had a pretty nice overall look to it. Looked like it would grade high enough. And you'll see here right away in the fields, not the fields, on the legs. You see those lines? It's got some scratch in action right there, which they denoted appropriately, obverse scratched. Blends in pretty good with the surface overall, but now that you know it's there, you'll always see it. That's called the broken tile syndrome for all of you psych majors out there. 74. So a nice XF coin is probably $300 plus. So this one will be undoubtedly less than that with the scratch. Uh, overall, you know, the overall look and appearance though, for someone who wants a nice used coin with a little bit of wear, visually it has a really nice compelling look, a very original surface quality look to it. What else we got? I got two more coins here to look at. One more is a crack out and uh, this 1822, Nice looking large scent. Get some of the dust off of this here surface of the uh, holder so we can look at that. Love me some 1822 action. Look at those curly Q2s. I, uh, if I get a tattoo, maybe I'll get some curly Q2s on it. That'd be pretty cool. Nice looking, nice looking coin. Actually, I would go so far as to call this one very conservatively graded. Uh, now that I'm looking really closely at the surface quality and also just how much detail is left on that wreath. VF30, okay, VF30, they, you know, I'm not going to squabble between a 30 and a 35. I, it's probably not going to make that much of a difference. I don't think it's an XF anyways, but uh, I, I, I had misremembered. I thought it was graded at a 20. But uh, nice looking piece overall. That is going to be in that $200 plus range. Last but not least, so this coin was interesting. This was a 1919 Denver Mint that was originally in a VF Details cleaned. And uh, as much as I'm fond of telling you what I can grade, I'm also fond of telling you what I cannot grade, and that's Buffalo Nickels. But when they called this coin a VF, I just thought, you know, I... I understand that you know you don't have a, a full horn exactly on this coin, but also you have, I think, I think you have touches of luster mixed in throughout this still. And I I designated when I looked at it originally the coin as an extra fine, and it's similar to the coins that I see sometimes get straight graded. Nickel's a little bit harder. You know, this does have a wiped look to it, so I'm not going to complain too much that the XF detail is clean. There's a part of me that wonders if I had actually sent this into NCS for conservation, if it would have come back uh, without that cleaning moniker. In other words, are you able to get... It looks like... It feels it feels like there's a little bit of resin residue around the outline of the buffalo that I wonder if that was all a uniform look, if that would come back a straight grade or not. But we'll let bygones be bygones forever here. This 1919D coin is a coin that in extra fine is, you know, two to $300 range. 
Uh, so it is still going to be staying in this holder, marked as cleaned, but also, uh, you know, I think that it's probably worth more than in the VF holder. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner, watch more videos, and uh, leave some comments there for the algorithm. You guys take care.